again, Mike Hacker with Bray Architects, and we have a couple items to go through tonight. Um, if you remember last time we met, we had talked about tonight's main goal is going to be to tour the high school, and we're going to really look at academic spaces. So just like last time, we want to spend about an hour touring the building, and then we're going to come back and we're going to do some small group discussions. And we're going to do that a little differently this time. We're actually going to roll out some floor plans at each of the tables, nice and large, and ask you some of the similar questions where we're going to want you to document circle areas, kind of help us diagram those plans a little bit based on your experience touring the building. Okay, So we'll talk a little bit more about that um, when we uh, uh, get to that point in the night. So I have a couple uh, housekeeping items and a couple follow-ups from last time, and then I'm going to turn it over to Brian to talk about Finance 101. Okay, and so um, first, everybody should have a packet that was uh, paper clipped together. Here you're going to have the agenda for tonight, as well as the overview from the last meeting. And just like we had talked last time, our hope is to provide you a quick snapshot and a summary of the discussion from, from the last meeting. So that is what that document Can is. Can I ask you a question? Because it was a little confusing. You used the word water tank, and they even said it wasn't a tank. Can you just draw a picture? of what that was above the server we, room? Why don't we provide, why don't we bring that with for the next meeting? Okay, oh. and so instead of drawing that on the spot now, we'll pull together a detailed description of what that is and provide some photos and make sure, because I'm not sure everybody got a chance to see it. So why don't we do that next time? I think that will help provide some clarity. Okay. Um, so then you will see a fold out site plan from Jackson Elementary. Okay, and one of the things that the group a couple questions on last time was specifically how the traffic moves around that site. And so what we've done is spent a little time attempting to diagram that property. Okay, and so what you'll see on that site plan is uh, a couple, three different colors of dashed lines. Okay, and the first color you see at the north is yellow. Okay, and that is our bus movement. Okay, so there you can see uh, the circulation of the bus through the site, um, how they uh, make their way around for both drop-off and pickup, that that is in fact separated from the parent movement and any of the pedestrian movement and isolated on that north side or I guess the east side of, of the building. Okay. Uh, you see a drop-off entry and then you see a bus pickup zone as well. And that's pretty common because if you think about it, uh, drop-off generally happens as the buses get there and pick up, we're usually staggered. All the buses are waiting for that bell and all the kids get on at the same time. Okay. Then below you'll see a, um, a uh, kind of a, I guess, reddish gray magenta color, thank you. Uh, that's our car traffic, okay? And the cars specifically for parents that are doing drop off and pick up. Okay. And so you can see, really we bring all of our parents that are dropping off and picking up uh, into that parking lot to the south. Um, there then you can see in blue our pedestrian movement from that parking lot into the building. So you can see that all of our students that get dropped off and or picked up by parents are having to cross that street. Just parking lot to the west of the school. Correct. Yep, correct. And then lastly on there we attempted to provide you some um, kind of uh, uh, diagrammatic uh, traffic control signals. So you can see uh, stop signs where we have school zone signs located as well as where we have a traffic uh, light uh, intersection. How many of those are crossing guards? Uh, that is a very good question. I don't. We have two crossing guards. Thank you. They've had. Yep. How many are police? That's a good question. Do you happen to know how many are police officers? Uh, at, in the past, there's been none. There okay. were police that have been there to assist if needed, but there's usually a, a crossing guard at 60, and then there's a crossing guard at Georgetown. Okay. Actually, I talked to Jed Dulnick, and he says there are crossing guards there every day, morning and afternoon. He's the chief of police in, in Jackson. There are crossing guards. I just said there's a crossing guard at 60, and mm -hmm. then there's a crossing guard at Georgetown. Those are the two crossing guards. Is that one to go across Georgetown or do it go across Jackson or both? Yes, both. So the piece uh, that went along with this was then helping us quantify how many students are dropped off and picked up, how many are, are bust. Okay, and so the next uh, page that you have is a quick summary that basically shows us that right now 
we have um, basically we have a slight difference in the morning versus the afternoon, but we have somewhere between 68 and 74 students being bused. The remainder of the students are being dropped off uh, and or are walking to school. Okay, so you can just see that, how that ratio works. We showed you morning and afternoon just to try to give you as, as much detail as possible. You can basically see the split is about the same. Okay. <coughs> Were there any other questions on this or any other additional detail we can, we can bring to the next meeting? So when Silverbrook and Badger changed to 5th, 6th, and then 7th, and 8th, yeah. Then the fifth graders left Jackson. Okay, so there's actually less students there now than there have been in the past. Uh, let me. Yeah, we, if we have that in. Well, borders changed. Yeah, when you change the borders again. Bar. Yeah. I think that was a part of the, when we closed and consolidated, I think that was a part of the whole I think if you were to look back to the last meeting's handout, I believe we had the enrollment data for each of the schools. Yep, so at tab 10 you can see there's a pullout that basically shows um, a uh, so it looks like at our highest in the building, we had about 536 students at Jackson Elementary. And you can see that trickle itself down to just under the 400 that we have today. Okay. It dropped about 100 after the change. Okay. okay. These triangles with the kids in it, that's like 15 miles an hour, right? Uh, you know, I don't know yeah. that information. Yeah, it is. Yeah, and then they also have like a blinking light that if you're going a little bit faster, and then I believe they have the pedestrian, um, like a pylon there too. Yep. 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 So I think really I, the the indication there is that there are means in place to help try to slow down traffic and try to indicate when we have students moving through there. Um, we have some uh, both active and some passive components trying to help us control that as much as possible. Okay. Do you know how far away they got from? Is it a mile or is it two or? Good question. I do not know that. Uh, is it anybody at the district? Yeah. Yeah. We can. That's okay. We can. We can bring that for the next meeting. Well, the reason why I'm asking is if you're trying to get down the pedestrian walking, <laughs> I, and I don't know. Obviously, I know nothing about the bus situations and what the burden it would put on them. Maybe if you want to lessen how far away they're walking from, if it is truly, if that would be something that might stall the pedestrian traffic that we're that it sounds like you guys are nervous about, maybe that would be something to think about. More regulated by our kindergartners than by our elementary students. There's no regulation on our kindergartners of the miles. Do you know what it is? But is that, I mean, can we adjust that down? I'm pretty sure it's the mile, unless there's no public sidewalk. I think it's, it's a kind of a complex system. Why don't we bring back some more detail? I just want to be sure we provide as much clarity there as, as we can. So what we can do is we'll work with the district. We'll pull the strategy and the setup for the busing for Jackson as well as the rest of the district and try to provide uh, you guys as much detail as possible. It's actually one mile and a quarter. If it's less than that for fourth grade, then they walk. Okay, and then the last item that you wanted, uh, you had requested a bit more detail on was uh, our energy usage uh, with as much detail per square foot for comparison's sake as possible. So um, uh, Dave Ross, who's not here tonight, worked closely with their information to pull us as, as much information as possible. So the next spreadsheet that you see here uh, attempts to outline uh, reaching back for three fiscal years here, um, basically uh, our, our cost per square foot from an energy use standpoint for each of the elementaries and then for, for the high school as well. Okay. And again, Dave's not here tonight to answer any of the detailed questions about that, but if, if there are any, um, I'm happy to uh, bring those back and, and attempt to uh, help answer those. If you are to look at the uh, 1415, which is our, our most recent information, um, you can see uh, 
right now, Jackson Elementary is at about 89 cents a square foot, which is uh, looks to be the highest of the elementary schools. And then we're right around a dollar here at the high school. Okay. Are you going to hold questions for him for next week if we have questions on this? If you'd like to ask if I'm happy to bring those. Well, I'm just curious since most of the facilities didn't change that much, he obviously has a trend going here that mm -hmm. the uh, usage is going down. So is that just from him, them doing something different or it's flat new windows in or just curious what his trend is going in the right direction. Here, sure. So. sure. What does yeah. he attribute that to? Yep. And it probably has to do with our energy controls. It probably has to do when we do update equipment that is more energy efficient. Um, when we do replace lights, they're generally going to be LED. It's probably helping drive that down. But why don't you let me have him come back with the detailed response to that? It's a good, good question. Yeah, I'd like to know what the core is doing to get that so low. Okay.